everyone and welcome! In this video I'm going to be explaining magnetic ride suspensions. Now the purpose of magnetic ride suspensions is to be able to actively control the damping force of your suspension. So, how does it do that? Well, most of the action all occurs within the shock absorber itself. So here we've got our uh, strut or our coilover shock absorber and we're going to take a detailed look inside and see what's going on inside of this. So what we've got going on side, inside is it's a lot like a regular uh, shock absorber and then it has this piston and as this uh, shock absorber compresses uh, this fluid within moves through these piston uh, channels and as that fluid gets restricted through these piston channels it dampens out the force uh, and it tries to just stop moving. So if you haven't yet watched my video on suspensions you may want to check that out. I kind of go into greater detail of how this whole thing works. Um, but basically, what we're doing here is the exact same as any regular shock absorber. There's just a few subtle differences. So, what happens is, instead of just a regular oil, we have this oil within the shock absorber, and there's also tons of little tiny metal particles, and these can be uh, magnetically attracted um, because they're metal. So, what we've got inside of this piston here, which is connected to the shock absorber body, uh, through this line here, and then we've got this line coming down, this coil coming down, and then we've got an electromagnet inside of that. Now, if you haven't yet watched my video on electromagnets, you'll want to check that out so you understand how electromagnetics, electromagnets work. Um, basically, what we've got, if we look inside of this piston here, is here's our electromagnet. It's been cut in half. It really just looks like this. It's a, a big coil of copper wires. Uh, and when you send a current through that coil of copper wires, what that does is it creates this magnetic field. So this magnetic field is passing through these piston channels where our fluid with the metal and the oil is going to be passing through. So if we take a detailed look uh, at, at what's going on right here in this little section, you can see when you have the uh, suspension not on, when you're not sending a current through this electromagnet, then it acts just like a regular shock absorber and that the fluid can move freely through these piston channels. Now, when you activate uh, the, the suspension and you send a current through this electromagnet, then you're going to create this magnetic field and what that does is it's going to line up all these tiny little magnetic particles inside of the suspension and they're going to basically make this uh, fluid a lot more thick. So it's going to, the fluid is going to have a much tougher time moving through these layers of electromagnetic particles that you're kind of just holding in place. Um, and so the fluid is going to try and pass these and it's going to resist that because of this magnetic force. And so what that does is it stiffens your suspension quite a bit. So if you want it to be really stiff, like say you're going around a corner and you don't want any body roll, well, if you activate this and you send a high current through it, you're not going to roll at all because it's not going to allow that fluid to pass through. So you can really change the characteristics of how the car handles just by varying how much voltage you send through this electromagnet. And it does this with a controller, um, and a lot of cars will have different settings so you can change how much uh, it interferes and how much it changes uh, the suspension feel as you're driving. You can make it more comfortable, more rigid, uh, things like that. But basically that's how it works. All that really happens is you activate uh, this electromagnet by sending a current through it, and what that does is it basically lines up all these little particles that are in here and prevents that piston from moving much, um, so it's a real stiff uh, system. So, why would you want a system like that? What are the advantages of it? Well, it's active, fully adjustable, variable damping, so you can actively control the damping that your car has. Now with traditional coilovers, you've just got one setting and it's set, and that's it. So there are variable ones out there, but the other advantage of this is this is a hundred times, I mean, this, this can activate, change the uh, damping ratio over a hundred times per second. So it's very quick to change um, based on different sensors that are on the vehicle and understand what's going on. And it's very quick to react to these things versus some of the other variable options out there. The other thing is most suspensions out there aren't, aren't even variable or they are variable, but you have to manually adjust them, you know, go out with a wrench, turn a little knob, um, and then you can change the damping ratio. So that's one huge advantage. Uh, also, you have independent control at each wheel. So rather than having um, you know, a setup where all four of your wheels are doing the exact same thing, no matter what feedback they're getting, like one's hitting a bump and one isn't, they're all going to have the same setting. Whereas this can change uh, the voltage going to each individual wheel, so you can individually control that suspension. 
Um, the other benefit, there's no uh, moving parts in this compared to a traditional coilover, so you're not going to have any uh, more moving parts. These are items that would wear um, and, and fail eventually. Uh, and then also you can reduce body movement. So, like I was saying, if you, if you make it really stiff, you can prevent the body from even rolling going around the corner. If it hits a bump, you can have it so it's soft uh, and then firm as it, as it comes back down, so it basically doesn't even notice that it hits that bump. Um, so you can completely reduce body movement and keep the car as flat as possible. Uh, disadvantage, of course, being cost and complexity. Whenever you have great technology that has all these advantages, of course it's going to be expensive uh, and it's probably going to be complex. So that's always the downside. Um, to maintain these could be a bit more expensive. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.